Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Kevin Dooling with KD Investors. Grains ending mixed on a Wednesday. And Kevin, let's talk about the wheat market because we did see some double digit losses kind of surprising here with some of the other things that were going on in the market, including a lower dollar and weather seems to be maybe a little bit conducive for that market being a little higher. Well, I sure thought so. I was prepared for a plus 25 week based on the Russian forecast and some of the Western, you know, Western Southern Plains forecast. I thought, okay, this should be a strong week. And then here we are down 12, 13 today in Chicago, 15 in KC. And, and it's just kind of, kind of weird stuff. Uh, it's, I think as long as we go, I think we continue that dryness in Russia, we're going to start, we have to start seeing some upward pressure because that's the number one area. And, you know, if they're going to come in, you know, they've already started to drop crop production estimates there. And if that continues, we're, we've got to start paying attention to that. I don't, I'm not sure what really is driving us lower right now. Yeah. So. What about technicals? You know, we've been seeing the funds so short and we get little pops and then we kind of hit some chart resistance. Is that another thing that might have happened today? Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps we just didn't have enough buying power to do it. And the funds, you know, as we were talking a minute ago off camera, you know, that we just the grains aren't invited to the party yet. And the funds continue to to press these shorts and, and build them. And, and I'm not sure what it's going to take to move them out of there. And And technically, we should. We, we really don't have any reason to make new contract lows in any of the wheat contracts that I can see or corn and, and, and yet we're not moving away from them yet. So um, if we're going to have a May, June window, like we traditionally do, we need to start seeing some support here pretty quick. So. Kevin, you and I have also talked about the geopolitical environment that we're in and how, especially the wheat market has been kind of immune to trading it, putting any war premium in, especially now with the Middle East situation, right? Right. It feels like we're in a different world. It's uh, There's really nothing that matters. There's nothing that can draw the attention. You know, last fall, you know, when Israel uh, got attacked, it was like, okay, the Middle East might blow up here. So I threw on some, some cheap uh, energy hedges just to protect the upside from that. And, and then the, the crude market dropped 10 bucks and you know, crude markets down again today, despite Israel saying they're going to have a counterattack. And, you know, it's just not normal. We're just not seeing normal trade behavior right now. And I think, you know, one of the things that's really caught my eye is that gold silver markets have taken off and divorced some things that normally go with them. And you know, we're in quite a time right now. I think we're going to be in a very rocky seven, eight months. And it would not surprise me to see at some point a lot of outside money come off the sidelines and try to buy real products. You know, they, if they're chasing gold and silver now, they're going to look at grains as dirt cheap. They're going to buy exposure to grains through either the ETF products or they're going to, you know, they'll find a way to do it. The index funds. Um, it feels like we're going to move into that point where we're you know, people want real goods again. And so it, it's, it, I could talk for hours on this, but it, it you're definitely in a, a totally different market environment than just our typical supply demand. And, and, you know, who knows what happens geopolitically as we go forward. So, yeah, usually when we get in these geopolitical situations, though, we, because um, we equate that with food is one of the first things that kind of gets bought, but it hasn't been. So that's really been interesting to watch. Uh, let's talk about the soybean market today as well. We were higher and, you know, is that mostly short covering um, there and in the products or what was the pop? It was short covering and some, some, you know, we were, we're getting down to those contract lows again and the people are getting the trade is going to have to ask themselves, do they want to press this to new contract lows or not? You know, you've got the big discrepancies between CONAB and USDA and, and as well as Argentina and USDA. And, and, and it's like, okay, so, what do we do with this market? Does it need to be at new lows? I don't think it does. I mean, demands we're seeing, you know, we had China in last week. We're going to see a good sales number this week. Um, to me, it's, it should be, should be supportive in here. And so you're probably seeing some, some guys that are short, just kind of easing off of that. And that par partially why wheat was drugged down with it as well. Cause that's one of their favorite spread trades. So. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So, and, the other question I have on the soybean market is we've seen some devaluation of the real in Brazil. So does that mean that sometimes we're going to see farmer selling pressure hitting the soybean market here or not? 
Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, any time that the that the currencies hit get hit like that, I mean, the farmers are going to react. I mean, if they're getting a higher bid, then they're going to take it, and that's going to help uh, help them and hurt us. But you know, in the in the big picture, and this goes back to the geopolitics a little bit. You know, gold and silver has been going up the same time as the dollar, and I don't know if I've ever seen that happen before. And so, as we move forward, I you know, I almost wonder if the dollar is going to take a back seat and, and you're going to see more of, um, of that risk on for commodities take place regardless what the dollar does. And so, like I say, you got to this year is going to be a lot different than normal. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Kevin, corn kind of looked like it got stuck in the middle of soybeans going up, the wheat market going down. So it ended slightly lower on the day. But if you look at a chart, man, we've been in such a tight range. Why have we continued to coil there? What's going on in that market right now? You know, it's probably just, a, to simplify, it's probably just a very large um, percentage of stocks in grower hands yet combined with, you know, everybody's waiting on this Safrina crop. And we're just about to that time where, you know, those cards are going to get played. I mean, a month from now, we're already going to know you know, did it rain and get, you know, and, and the crop came out just fine in Brazil or did they have big problems? You know, so we're going to we're going to know all that in a month. And so I think that's why you're seeing a big kind of a coil right here. And, you know, to me, technically, it it, it needs to hold today's low. We need to kind of get away from here. I don't want to see it move below that, even though, you know, if I look at the weather maps, it, it looks problematic to me. They're starting to dry out. So um, <clears throat> I would, you know, venture to say it, it should be bullish we should get a bounce here but you know the funds are going to run it at first and if they break the technicals at first it, it's going to be a nice little trap there so yeah they've continued to be so short here going into our growing season which is unusual on its own so do you think we're going to get our normal seasonal rally because don't we usually get some nice rallies around the may time period at least for corn yeah, it's a good spot. May and June, right before the U.S. weather season starts, can typically be a decent, decent little window. We used to get some hedges on and get protected, and so, um, so yes, I would, ex I would ex still expect some kind of move here. But you know, again, if the weather for some reason uh, stays gets cool and wet for for May, then we, we're going to have a hard time rallying much um, without major outside buying, and. Um, but with all signs pointing to a drier and hotter Argent or Brazil, then I would I would think we're going to get that window. Um, and if, if there's more crop than normal that needs to be moved, then we're probably going to have a, a little bit more of a tempered advance than we expect. But again, it's going to depend on the hedge funds. That's a huge short. And if we get in index fund buying on top of a dry Brazil, then we could have a lot of fun here. We could get back to a we, we could actually overachieve a little bit there. Do you think the cattle market's going to go back to trading its own fundamentals or is it right now? I mean, if we work through the HPAI fears, um, I know we're running up into the cattle on feed report here on Friday as well. You know, I just saw a chart a little bit ago. Someone posted they overlaid the cattle chart with the S&P and it was just pretty much similar. And that bothers me a little bit. I, I, you know, I hate to think the funds have that much influence over the market like that. But that's one of the things that scares me a little bit. If it wasn't for for it being directly tied to that S and P the, the way it is, I would feel like cattle should bounce here. Uh, you know, I've still got all the hedges on for 24, and I uh, I felt like I should remove those this week. And there's part of me that's saying, "Eh, let's wait for the cattle on feed report, see what it does, and then we'll remove hedges if necessary." But um, I'm encouraged by the cash trade. I feel like <clears throat> there, there's reason for a divorce there between the the S and P and, and cattle, but so far, we haven't seen it yet. So yeah, cash is held together quite well compared to the futures and the correction that we've had there, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure, and, and that's a good thing because it's, it's you know this is a market that a lot of cattlemen have dreamed of. We haven't had the herd rebuild, and yet uh, you know here we are dropping twenty, thirty cents, you know, uh, in every you know a couple of weeks, and it's 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 a tough tough market right now. So no doubt. A lot of volatility there for sure. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin Dooling with KD Investors. That is Markets Now.